morning, everybody. Walking around downtown Portland this morning. Just want to get some fresh air before the rain hits. Got a rain alert. It's going to rain and thunder all day today. So we'll enjoy the first part of the morning here, okay? All righty. Feel the boost. Adidas? Huh. I guess this is the headquarters of Adidas. Oh, did you know that Paul Bunyan's got some style, got some swag, guys? Yeah, Paul Bunyan might sport these awesome Adidas shoes. Superstar! If that's not quirky, I don't know what is. Huh, so the headquarters of Adidas is here in Portland, Oregon. Very cool, how about that? They do have that big Paul Bunyan statue right down there in Kenton, so that makes sense. Cool. Well, I don't know if there's a visitor center or not. I'm going to look around a little bit. That's a negative. It's just corporate offices and parking garages. I'm going to go across the street, though, too. So I just want to let you know. I went into the office there across the street. Kind of hard to get to because of the construction. There's nothing here except offices. That's, that's too bad. So, you know any magnets I can have? No, no, no. So let me do a little research. I was not planning on the rain. It is going to rain bad today, starting in like an hour. So I'm getting the RV and plan my day out otherwise. I saw a semi truck earlier today that uh, had a big sign on the back that says blinkers on question mark. Please don't speed up. <laughs> that is the universal thing to do when any big rig is trying to get over. Close the gap on us. Uh, I'm going to get out of downtown Portland because uh, yeah, no, 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 I don't want to do it in an RV. <laughs> so, and see that I see my shirt? <laughs> I found something related to this south of Portland. So, we'll try to beat the rain there, okay? All right. That's right, sporting my NASCAR leather jacket because ladies and gentlemen, we are here at World of Speed here in Wilsonville, Oregon a massive motorsports museum known nationwide. But this museum represents the Northwest contributions to motorsports. And that includes hot rods, drag racing, music influenced cars, classic cars, race cars, Indy cars, NASCAR, everything. I am so excited. And on their webpage, it says photos and videos permitted. So yes, I'm gonna go buy a ticket I'm going to share it with you guys. So it's uh, $10 to get in the museum, and then there's some other stuff going on. Big boy. It's all American classic cars and motorsports, everything. Check out their magnets. Hmm. Oh, look at that little trailer. It can be yours. Oh, it's a cooler. Are you kidding me? It's an Airstream cooler for 550 bucks. That would be awesome on somebody's porch. Ooh. And yes, we're going to see a lot of cars in the museum. Let's get this started. They didn't have anything that says World of Speed on their magnets for some reason. They just had a whole bunch of car stuff, but they had a, a Coca-Cola one. So I went with that magnet and this will be my World of Speed magnet. How about Mario Andretti? And here he is, his 1967 Ford Fairline stock car for NASCAR. Whew. Oh, a 67 GT40 right here. There are a lot of cars in here. Remember, as always, I'm only gonna show my favorite 10% of what's going on in here. Remember when I was out there in Utah doing my speed test out in the desert on the TW200? This is a uh, land speed racer here. How fast does she go? Well, it's got two small block Chevys, 750 horsepower each, and this bad boy goes 288 miles per hour. That's fast. Oh, a 1994 Lola oh, yeah. Indy car. There, now we're talking. And like I said, it's not just cars and racing. They have a whole music section because how music inspired racing, I guess, and stuff. Oh, this axe up here signed by Gene Simmons. <laughs> I doubt it works, but look at this cassette deck. Boombox. Oh, yeah. This one has to be 60s, right? 8-track? 70s, maybe? Oh, there is some funky stuff in here, I'll tell you what. They have little signs telling you you can, you can mess with these things all you want. That's why they're out here in the open. Here's a Sylvania Thunderbird. Huh. That's an old radio too. Maybe I'm going backwards. That music section is called the Wall of Sound. Okay, so that's where that starts. Let's read the first sentence here. It says, the synergy between cars and music connects our lives like long road trips 
bringing folks together, singing along to songs that stir up good memories. So that's the connection. And of course, we gotta talk motorcycles if we're talking speed. There's a 1930s flathead engine, 1936 knucklehead, 1948 panhead, a 66 shovelhead, an 84 big twin, and the twin cam 88. And a 1917 Model F sidecar Harley. I'd sit here, Jax would be right there in his throne. Couple dragsters here. Ooh, 1969. There's a T90 there, number five. Well, that's really bright. And go. <laughs> okay. And it's NASCAR time. And they got Richard Petty's Chevy Monte Carlo, 79. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Looks clean, looks ready to go. Let's fire that girl up. Little gas pump here that's been converted to a little screen showing stuff. And being as I have actually camped inside the infield of the Daytona 500 twice in my life, it is pretty cool to see this here in the Northwest, the Daytona. And they're on a slope up here. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Chevy up there, number eight. And Terry Labonte's 88 Budweiser. Did you hear about that a week ago? Dale Jr. and his family uh, actually got in a, a plane crash in uh, t Tennessee, I think it was. They crashed their plane, caught fire. They're all okay. But uh, yeah, that's kind of scary. Oh yeah, Tom Cruise, Days of Thunder. They show some of the uh, Daytona track in there and the old RVs back then. That's an old seat. That's a really cool jumpsuit. They have some simulator rides that you can pay extra to ride to normally. They're uh, being serviced right now. They think they might have one of them fixed later, but a 1995 Mercedes-Benz IndyCar, a 98 Ford for the uh, NASCAR, and a 62 Lotus. Come back. Maybe they'll uh, get it fixed. Hey, it's an authentic 1958 egg chair. I've seen some of these beat up ones at like swap meets and antique stores. So as we can sit in it and listen to the music. Let's see how comfortable this is. Oh, oh yeah. I mean like, how do you make the music start? Siri, play music and speak. Wait, 1958, yeah, probably not. Is this the future of semi trucks? If so, I like it. That is sexy. Look at that. It's all about being more aerodynamic to get better fuel economy. So they did away with the uh, side mirrors so that it's more aerodynamic and then they use cameras to be able to see what's behind you into the side. And that sign down there says it has run smart, predictive cruise control. It's nice, it's nice. You don't gotta be big to be fast and successful. They got three Mini Coopers. Uh -huh. The 1960 Scrab Offenhauser, the very first Formula One race car. Okay, these cars are not very fuel efficient. <laughs> they have a little model here to kind of show us. Uh, I'm kind of happy getting seven or eight miles per gallon in Miranda after seeing this. You can consume 18 gallons of fuel in three seconds. Okay, that's just idle. We're idling right now. There we go. And time to refuel. <laughs> we can test out a supercharger here, uh-huh, and see how that works to uh, push the NASCAR down the road. So we'll get it fired up. Okay, it's going. And then we'll, we'll hit the gas here. Ooh. Is she moving? Go, there she goes. <laughs> and we can see how the gears work of a quick change rear end. Turbo charger here. We'll get a look at that guy cut away there. We'll hit the gas here. And there she goes. Oh, Bucky's Speed Shop. I wonder if they've got a Turbo V10 for Miranda. Oh, I do see some header gaskets. We're going to need some more of those soon. <laughs> uh, don't remind me. Don't remind me. Look at this garage. All sorts of toys. Mm hmm. Always good to have an extra big block, <laughs> or seven. Well, they got me a turkey sandwich. I'm gonna wait and see if they can fix that simulator. See if they can.
NASCAR is going to be out for several days. The processors broke. At least I got to sit in it and try it. And it was fun to ride the Lotus. <laughs> very, very much worth it, I think. Pretty cool spot. Pretty cool place. I'm going to head on out, guys. It's been nice. Oh, it is pouring rain outside. Well, you know, either, either way. Made the most of it, right? Got to see something cool. <laughs> All right, we'll put our Coca-Cola magnet up there next to the Mount St. Helens and Route 66 magnet there. Mm -hmm. well, we've been having some rain. It's letting up. This is about the lightest it's been, so I decided to come outside and share with you what I got going on in the back. I do, I do have my cover. As you can see, the water beating right off it. No problem keeping the bike dry underneath. But it, what it doesn't protect against is if I'm driving on a dirt road, well, the dirt's going to get kicked back under the rear tires and it's simply going to go right up the bottom of this cover right here and get the bike dirty and wet. So, and uh, if I'm just sitting here, might as well protect it as much as I can. And I also decided, because of the weather and everything, just to kind of wait it out here in Wilsonville, Oregon and, and get a fresh start tomorrow after it dries up. So, I'm here at a, a camping world in Wilsonville and I appreciate camping world giving me the okay to have a safe spot to park because uh it's gonna be few and far in between as we go on south for sure i'll show you what's going on inside though you know you got to get creative on the rainy days so netflix is my friend uh let's see the ps4 is my friend and actually netflix just suggested a new show and i like it I'm only 22 minutes into it but hyperdrive they're drifting and racing cars in a competition with some really good driving. It's really cool. But because of the rain and the clouds and the lack of solar, you know, running the TV and using the microwave and stuff like that, and the, uh, I'm probably gonna have to run the generator for a couple hours on these rainy days just to kind of get back the solar, you know? Um, where's my kid? Oh, there you are. You hanging out right there? You don't want to come sit next to me? I got a cat bed over here that, that, that's comfy. It's, you could, after I move my drone stuff, of course. Well, let me know, okay? Oh, hi, buddy. Hi, baby. You sleeping the whole day away, huh? All right, man. All right. So, Jackson, I'll see you in a couple days. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> can, can I cut back in with one more little uh, word of caution? If you find yourself staying at Camping World, boondocking in Camping World, uh, you're going to sleep overnight uh, during the business hours of Camping World, I highly suggest you to lock the doors of your RV, as you may have customers coming around thinking that you are an RV for sale. Even if you park near the service center, customers will walk the entire perimeter and they think that they should just be opening every single door on the property. Okay, so I mean, it's just, I guess, part of the life of living at Camping World for the night. But yes, lock all of your doors, all every single garage door, cam lock outside, lock the entire RV up or put a note on the door that says occupied, not for sale, maybe. <laughs> Cracked me up, though. All right. Good night, guys.